Welcome back everyone, this is Dave from Corn Productions, here to talk about an article I stumbled upon, titled, How Black Barbers Have Become Mental Health Advocates for African American Men, written by Elizabeth Wells from CNN. Ray Connor traces his ambition to be a barber back to when he was a kid in Detroit. Growing up, he was abused. He watched his mother battle drug and alcohol addiction addictions. He often went to bed hungry. When he needed to get away, he went down to a cut above barber shop on 8 Mile Road for a fresh cut and some companionship from his barber, Jesse. The relationship carried him through some of the darkest days of his life. Jesse may not remember me, but him being my barber as a kid saved my life. And it is now because of him that I am not only a master barber, but a barber instructor, Connor wrote on the shop's Google reviews a few months ago. Connor, based in Johnson City, Tennessee, was inspired to become both a barber and a mentor for other young black men facing adversity. If I can give what he gave to me, then I know I'm doing something great, Connor told CNN. The Confess Project Barber Coalition, a nonprofit created to help black men and boys become the best versions of themselves, hosted a workshop in his town earlier last year. Connor immediately knew he needed to get involved. He was struck by how the organization's founder, Lorenzo Lewis, spoke frankly about his own hardships. Through the coalition, he was shown not only how to better take care of his mental health, but also give, given the tools to provide that same support system to his clients. Systematic racism has created a unique need for support in the black community, yet national data shows many African American communities are woefully under-resourced and underrepresented in the behavioral health care. The past year has exasperated these challenges. The pandemic has disproportionately affected African Americans and the repeated instance, instances of racial injustice and police brutality have led to an increased need for mental health services in the black community. The Confess Project mission is to bridge the gaps in mental health care by providing a safe space for people to talk openly about the struggles they face. In turn, it has created a network of support among the barbers. Since it began in 2016, the Barber Coalition has spread to 16 cities across the Southeast and Midwest and trained more than 200 barbers to be mental health advocates for their communities. Coronavirus has forced much of its outreach online, but has thus also allowed them new opportunities for growth through its expanded digital presence. The group hosts online training courses, group support calls, and individual check-ins for its member barbers to circumvent the lockdowns and social distancing guidelines the pandem pandemic has brought upon them. More than a haircut. For African American men, the self-care of sitting in the barber seat goes far beyond personal aesthetic. It's the black mecca of the community, said Darnell Rice, the director of engagement and membership for the Confess Project. We go to the barbership shop to talk about everything. Studies have indicated barbershops can be effective at promoting and improving public health in the black community. The intimacy gave Lewis his avenue to start a mental health movement. Most barbers are already trained to build relationships and trust with their clients. Lewis takes that one step further by teaching his members how to engage in active listening and guide their clients to talk about issues in their lives. From there, the barbers have undergone training on stigma reduction and valid validation so they can provide clients with positive reinforcement for whatever they are facing. This article, of course, goes on, but I'm not going to read the entire thing. If you're interested, you can check out the article. I'll provide the link in the video description along with a link to the Confess Project Barber Coalition 
if you are interested in supporting them. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the stigma is strong within the black community. They say that the negative attitudes and beliefs towards people who live with mental health conditions is pervasive within the U.S. and can be particularly strong within the black community. One study showed that 63% of the black people believe that a mental health condition is a sign of personal weakness. As a result, people may experience shame about having a mental illness and worry they may be discriminated against due to their condition. For many in the black community, it can be incredibly challenging to discuss the topic of mental health due to this concern about how they may be perceived by others. This fear could prevent people from seeking mental health care when they really need it. Additionally, many people choose to seek support from their faith community rather than seeking a medical diagnosis. In many black communities in the U.S., the church, mosque, or other faith institution can play a central role as a meeting place and a source of strength. Faith and spirituality can help in the recovery process and be an important part of treatment plan. For example, spiritual leaders and faith communities can provide support and reduce isolation. However, they should not be the only option for people whose daily functioning is impaired by mental health symptoms. Now, I am a major proponent, or a proponent, I don't know how major I would consider myself to be, of the End the Stigma campaign, and I fully support what the Confess Project Coalition is doing. The stigma needs to be ended across the board, and mental health care needs to be, access to it needs to be improved as well. Healthcare in general in this country is a bit of a joke. Mental health care is even worse. Both of these situations need to be addressed, both in this country and worldwide. The specific link to the National Alliance on Mental Health that I was just reading from will also be included in the video's description if you were interested in reading more about this situation. Anyway, that's all I got for you for this video. If you like this video and my content in general and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can follow me on Twitter at Core Productions. You can join my Facebook group, Cormor Productions. You can buy something from the Cormor Productions store on Zazzle. You can buy me a copy, which is a new way to support content creators such as myself. And of course, you can like share, and comment on this video, as well as subscribing to my channel. This is Dave from Corman Productions, signing off.